So let me share the screen. So is it uh, visible as well as audible? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Audible and visible. Okay, so I want to see that how many are there. Just one minute. So this lecture will be focused on research writing. We have been uh, listening to the speakers on academic writing. So I think on research writing, Dr. Chandrasekhar is the second speaker, and the first was Dr. Mani Nepal. So another very interesting lecture you are going to listening to on systematic review, which is going to be useful for uh, all the participants, irrespective of your academic background. Okay. Yeah, you can start now. So let us start. So today I'm going to teach you that uh, how you can do a systematic review as well as the meta-analysis. Since most of you must have enrolled for PhD or might have, might have joined master degree where you basically have to write thesis. So or writing papers, as you know that review is a part of the paper as well as uh, identifying a research question also when you know, decided, okay, I'll do some research in any area, in any field, either in engineering, medic, medicine, or in social science or the basic science. So wherever you want to do research, so first, the foremost that, okay, you, you have to be a literature search, okay? Suppose you choose an idea, okay? Then you have to search that, okay, what is the literature available? So what kind of things are already known to the people and what are the things that are already unknown to the people and let me enter in that unknown area. So basically to know that, okay, what are the things already known to the people? So basically we generally do the literature review. And most of, some of you might have done, I guess the, all of you might have done the literature review uh, to some extent to know that, okay, uh, what is literature review, how you are doing the literature review, so, could you please tell me, the, anyone, a uh, few, have heard about the systematic review and meta-analysis? Actually, it mostly used in the, when earlier, it was basically used in the clinical research, mostly in the medical research, more, both the systematic review and meta-analysis. But nowadays, in the recent, uh, in the last 10, 15 years, uh, it's mostly the social science discipline, mostly the economics discipline as uh, borrowed from the clinical research to do a systematic review of uh, many, many programs or policies or any issue. So they try to do a systematic review. Basically, it helps them to basically call it the evidence-based policy making. Because you have evidence, because a review will tell you, okay, what are the evidence available uh, in this area? So how many of you have heard about the systematic review. Anyone? Anyone from social science? Anyone from medicine? Other than engineering? Yeah, someone. Anyone? Anyone? Yes, sir. I have heard. Okay. Do you have any idea? Yeah, I do have uh, some idea about uh, this SLR. I think it is the uh, systematic literature review, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Mm. I think it is the preliminary stage of meta-analysis. If we go further, I think it will, it will lead to meta-analysis. Yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, so do you have any idea that, uh, did you do it anytime? Uh, no, actually, I am writing a paper on that, on SLM, that is why. Okay, so 
Uh, so please tell me what your paper you are writing, what the issue basically you are writing. Maybe I'll think how I can relate to that. Yeah, it is. Yeah, please. Could you please? Yeah. Yeah, please tell me your paper about the paper so that I can relate to when well, uh, giving the lecture, I can relate to your issue. I, I uh, yeah. Yeah, actually, two, three emerging areas are there in my mind. For example, like one I spoke about that human capital, another one is about this uh, digital uh, uh, signboard. So I thought being these, this one is the emerging area. So I thought SLM will work so that way. Okay. So which uh, field are you from? Sir, I'm from uh, management and commerce. Okay, management and commerce. Okay. So you have completed your PhD. Yes, sir. Okay. So apart from uh, Sarma, Haridal Sarma, anyone else? Exactly what you want, uh, please elaborate me. Yeah. Please elaborate me uh, what you want exactly uh, to know from us. No, because I, I just want to know that whether uh, you have done the systematic review earlier or meta analysis earlier or whether you sir, have any idea about that system. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Sir, I have chemistry background. Hmm. So in chemistry, we are just taking the different papers, those are published. Uh, we are just referring this uh, systematically from uh, last uh, two decades or one decades mm -hmm. uh, from current list to back 10 to uh, 20 years back. Mm -hmm. What exactly happens in this field and what have to explore more mm -hmm. and what are the lacuna behind uh, some problems. Mm -hmm. We are just studying it in aeroscience, in chemistry, uh, in my field. That. But uh, did you follow any methodology to select the papers? Uh, sir, no. Select the papers? So, uh, there is no exactly methods because uh, if you want to, suppose you are uh, designing a drugs, that mm -hmm. kind of drugs, how other people are following and they take the methods. You are just following that methods and you may twist in some no, uh, no, no, synthetic I'm part. That. I'm not asking that. See, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, talking about some drugs, okay, so you basically have to stop doing the literature review. You basically yes. have to select some 20, 30 or 40 or 50 papers, okay, what are maybe available in your area, okay? Yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. but I'm asking you, there is a methodology behind it to select the 20, 30 or 40 papers, okay? Yes, sir. It's not like, okay, one way that, okay, you do a, a traditional review, where basically yeah. you search in the Google Scholar or you search in the some journals or you search in the based on the bibliography, okay, of yes. one article. Okay, yes, the sir. different ways you search and you end up yes, with sir. getting a 20, 30, or 40 articles. Yes, okay. Sir. Yes, that basically yes, random selection. Yes. Okay. So there is a but in systematic review, there is a because the we are coming up with a 30, 40, or 50 articles, okay. Yeah. So which yeah. is based on a uh, basically based on a methodology. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. Yeah, the yeah. Is I'm not going back that okay, there is a uh, there's of course there is a methodology or uh, the method in each paper about their analysis. Okay, that's the difference. Yes, okay, sir, yes. that's the difference. But selecting the paper also there is a methodology. Yes, sir. So method is that uh, what kind of setup we can do in our laboratory, that is our methods. Still you are not getting my point. Yeah, that way, I agree with you. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay, let me. Uh, explain that to you. So, apart yeah. from the Dilip Misra, so anyone else? So, thank you both Haridhan and Dilip Misra for speaking. So, you can stop me at any point of the time. So, if you have any doubt. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Carry on. Okay. The first thing that when you are interested to do research, okay, the first thing that okay, you want to design an effective research question, okay, first to identify a research question, first to suppose you choose a, any area, okay, either from chemistry or physics or from e since I'm from economics, I may end up with giving you lots of examples from economics, 
Okay. So first, so basically, suppose I want to do some research uh, related to COVID-19. Suppose uh, COVID-19 pandemic is going on. Okay. So because suppose I was thinking that, okay, how the COVID-19 pandemic has affected maybe the street vendors. Okay. Maybe some, uh, maybe some uh, workers or maybe the migrant laborers. Okay. I want to know that, okay, how the migrant laborers or the basically construction workers are affected by the COVID-19. Okay, I just want to know, but that's my, uh, I was just, uh, because when you start the research, you have idea, okay, I want to know, okay, the COVID-19 and the construction workers. But you don't know that, okay, how the construction workers are being affected by the COVID-19. And you don't have any idea, but you want to do a research that you have two words, two words with you that, okay, COVID-19 and the construction workers. So now the first question is that, yes, I want to design a very good research question. I would identify the research question. So in order to identify the research question, you have to do a literature review or literature search. Okay, literature review, you have to. So what the, why you are doing the literature review? Basically, you want to know what has been done. Okay, with respect to COVID-19 and construction workers, basically what has been done? What are the things as already established? Maybe in some fields, there is no literature. Okay, some fields there may be less literature. Okay, what has been done and what questions remain? Okay, are there contradiction in the literature? Okay, what are there contradiction in the literature and what questions remain? Okay, basically suppose I come from the economic uh, field of social science. Suppose you look into some kind of policy, policy kind of thing. Suppose you're thinking of the, suppose uh, going back to early, 2000, suppose in 2005, 6 or 7, or maybe 2010, suppose I'd like to do a research on uh, MGNRG. Basically, uh, you might have heard about that Mahatma Gandhi Rural em uh, National Rural Employment Guarantee Act or Guarantee Scheme, or people are getting employment through MGNRG. Suppose in 2010, it was uh, implemented just uh, three, four years or five years. Okay, and uh, there may not be many studies Within, uh, within that, uh, because uh, within that basket, there may not many studies happen. Because at present, as of now, there are many studies. But suppose you go back 10, 15 years before when basically the program was launched, so there may not be many studies. Okay, but so how you can design a better research question? Okay, please remember in every research, you may not have many research papers. Okay, may not have. Okay, so in that case, also you have to rely on a uh, similar kind of uh, programs or policies, what has been done okay, earlier. Okay, because earlier also we have a uh, like food for work, some program was there, which is uh, basically replaced with the MGN LGA. Okay, so basically you have to look that out, okay, in that program, what are the literature available, what are the problems which are facing. So I just want to point out here that in all the fields, and you may not have sufficient amount of literature. So basically the literature search basically we're doing. So why we're doing basically we have to know that, okay, what has been done? Okay, what is already there? And what questions remain? Okay, well, we know that, okay, these are the things that are already established or these are things that are already explored. So now the question is, okay, what questions have not been asked? And are, are the contradictions, are these literatures are contradictions in each other? Okay. So I was looking at, let me tell you an example, that okay, I was looking at the relationship between uh, human death uh, from natural disasters, basically floods in India. So how many people are basically dying from the floods and also relationship with the income. Okay. Suppose you have higher, in, so my, I was thinking, okay, how these two variables that income and the death from the flood are related. Okay. So what I've done, I was looking at the literature is available across the world. So by doing that, so I identified, okay, there are very less literature or no literature in the case of India, but there are several literature across the world and taking the countrywide studies. But I identified, okay, what is the relationship? Some studies found that, okay, there is a inverted U shape and some studies are telling that, okay, uh, the you either use safe or inverted use safe depending on these factors. 
there is another kind of uh, another strand of literature they talk about no 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 there is no relationship between them okay so basically while looking at the relations with causal relationship or the statistical uh, causality between the different variables uh, so basically we look at that okay what are the relations existing uh, across the studies or similarly to the other fields like physics uh, chemistry or in the medicine so you might look at okay with respect to this particular drugs suppose you think of like whether the particular vaccine suppose a and b like uh, covid shield and covaxin that's the two vaccines are partic particularly available in the case of india so now someone will go and do that okay so which one is effective which one is effective whether the covaxin is effective or the covid shield is effective now the question okay what are the literature available first get no okay what are the literature available okay so suppose they he got the tail literatures now he is looking at okay what is happening what the tail literatures are telling whether they are basically supporting the covaxin or they are not supporting the covaxin okay why they are not supporting the covaxin what is the problem with the covaxin similarly some literatures okay they are supporting covaxin not the covaxin okay so because why why it is happening the people are not so basically telling that okay the covaxin is better or the covaxin is better okay so that basically you have to identify what basically existing literature is there what the contradictions between the literatures that basically guide you that okay you identify yeah someone wants to ask question hilari chandrasekhar okay goals of a literature review so why you want to do a literature review basically to generate and refine your research ideas okay because you have an idea like i have already told you that okay suppose you have an idea that okay i look, like to look into the relationship okay how the migrant workers or the construction workers are affected by the covid 19 okay because you know that okay the, uh, because of the covid 19 might have read in the newspaper that okay because of the covid 19 the construction workers are largely affected because you just read in the news so that's idea you have because now you want to search the literature okay so basically to identify basically to generate the information that okay what is already existing and refine your research ideas because you are refining okay so how the construction workers are affected by the covid 19 okay there could be places that okay where the builders or the developers or the contractors Are taking care of the construction workers. Some places they are not taking care of the construction workers. They just left uh, with nothing. Uh, they can survive their own uh, own self. So uh, themselves. Uh, so therefore, you have to refine your research ideas and also to familiarize familiarize with the body of knowledge and also development of the previous research. And you are just linking the how the current project is linked to me. Okay. Basically, you have to know okay what is already existing, so that you can position yourself that okay where am I? Okay, these are the things that are already existing, and these are the things that are already known to the people, and where should I fit? Okay, what kind of research question I should raise there, and where should I fit within the that discipline or within that discourse of discourse? okay the last one is that to integrate summarize what is known in your given area basically areas of agreement where basically you agree and the areas of disagreement and basically the key questions what are the key questions on the study they are asking see there's two kinds of literature available to us one is the popular literature okay so because uh, as the dr moni that uh, is pointing out while writing the manuscript or the paper first you have to think basically from the social science i mean science also because they also write some columns and scientists also even uh, people from medicine also they write columns in the newspaper also okay so when you write about that okay types of uh, literature is the popular literature because you first you have to need to think of to, for whom you are writing okay because i have seen it during the covid 19 period some of the doctors they are also writing in the column about the 
basically generating the awareness about the COVID-19. Okay, because that uh, when writing in the newspaper, magazine, if they write using lots of jargons, okay, lots of terminologies of the medicine, no one can understand. Okay, including me also, I can't understand. But to understand that, I have to read another 10 papers. Okay, so when they write, so basically they have to know because of one kind of popular literature, that's a basically magazine or the news um, newspaper, when you're writing, because you know that your targeted audience is the general layman who may uh, less likely that they have any idea about the medical terminology. That's a less likely. So therefore, you have to use a single simple language so that they can understand without using any terminology, medical terminology. Maybe you can use that, but minimize the use of the medical terminology. The second thing that you are writing the scholarly literature. So basically, the scholarly literature writing, you're writing for the journal papers, journal articles, book chapters, reports. So that basically your audience is different. Basically, you're writing the, for the specialized audience. Those are experts in your field. Okay, those are experts in the field. I've just put the, some journal names from the economics field. Maybe you might have many um, uh, in other disciplines, also you might have many journals, basically. So therefore, we have two kinds of literature. One is the popular literature, another is the scholarly literature. Sir, sir, can I ask here one question? Yes, yours, yours, yours. Sir, in, <coughs> sir, Wikipedia is a knowledge source. So uh, what do we consider here? In between popular or uh, specific? Popular. It is a popular. Yes, yes, sir. It yes, cannot sir. be called as scholarly because it's not reviewed. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. The scholarly work, how to read critically. The thing that, okay, suppose uh, you have decided that, okay, you will do some literature search or literature review. Okay, so first thing that, while look, reading a paper, see that's the most important thing you should understand and you should know. Okay, uh, the reading, the paper you should read, not like technically, just sake of reading. When you read a paper, just sake of reading, okay, I have to read this paper or I have to read five, uh, two papers per day. I just read it. Okay, you can't, you'll not be benefited. So basically the scholarly work should be read differently. Okay, you need to have a conversation with the paper. Okay, basically you should know what arguments the paper is making. Okay, what are the arguments the paper is making? And why are they important? The first question you have to know that, okay, what is the research question? And why this paper is important? Okay, why this paper is, has some novelty? Okay, why this paper is published? Okay, why are they important? Do you agree? The, you have to ask, basically, that's I told you that you should have a conversation with that paper. Do you agree with the idea that author is putting, author or authors are putting? Okay, do you agree with that? Or you are not agreeing with that? So why you are agreeing? Suppose you agree, then okay, why I'm agreeing with that? And why I'm not agreeing with that? Okay, so, so you have to put your idea, okay, why I'm agreeing and why I'm not agreeing. Okay, basically you need to understand, okay, what are the arguments, what are the basic arguments this paper is making? And the first and foremost thing, the, you should know that why this paper is published. Or what is the reason that the editor or the reviewer has agreed to publish this paper? So you, in all the papers, you need to identify what is the novelty of that paper? So that basically guide you that when you write a paper, okay, when you write a paper, either it's an empirical paper or a review paper, that basically tell you that, okay, how better way you can write a paper. So how to write a literature review? This is all about the general review. Remember that literature reviews are organized around ideas, not the sources. Please remember here, because some of the, sometimes I've seen some of the master degree students, even some of the PhD students, they're writing when you see that I've uh, read lots of papers. I, I have been uh, reviewing articles by now more than uh, 40 or 50 journals. I'm the reviewer for the 40 or 50 journals. I've been reviewing uh, every year. I'm reviewing around 50, 60 papers. 
So I have seen sometimes some students, mostly those are uh, doing, doing the PhD or master degree. So when they're doing a literature review, they write that, okay, the author X told the story. Then next paragraph, author Y. The next paragraph, author Z. And next paragraph, author A. Next paragraph, author B. Please remember, this is not the literature review. So how you can write, the, this is not the literature review. This is just like a bibliographic summary. Summarize your summarize. Okay. Summarize the findings of each studies. Okay. So literature review basically organized around the ideas. What is the ideas you have? Suppose I'm looking at, okay, how the construction workers are being affected by the COVID-19. So suppose there are 20 papers already existing. So I, I can't write that, okay, author X has told that, okay, the construction workers in Mumbai city, uh, they are uh, being affected, they are not paid salary for two months or three months, or they, are, they don't have any work, or they migrated to their hometown, I'll write the students. Then I'll come back in another paper in Surat city. Okay, author uh, Z told that in Surat city, they have the issues, these are the issues. Then I'll come back that way, another paper in Delhi. The author A told that, okay, these are the, so this is not the literature review. Okay, so first thing I'll start with the ideas. What is my idea? Okay, so my idea is that, okay, the, how the construction workers are affected. Means whether the construction workers are being given employment during that period or they're being compensated. My idea is, okay, whether, my idea is that whether they're being compensated during that period by the government. Okay, because government has brought some policy that, okay, all the contractors or the developers have to take care of the construction workers. Okay, that's basically the policy imposed by the government. So I have to know that, okay, whether the contractors or the developers have obeyed that policy, okay, have abided by that policy. So basically that's my issue here. So where I, I look at, okay, so what are the literature available? Okay, the, then I look at, okay, what is happening with Mumbai, what is happening with Surat or Delhi or Kolkata or the Visapatna or in Indore or Ahmedabad. Okay, not like that X told, Y told, Z told. Okay, so to help you with this, so basically when you look at the papers, okay, how we can basically summarize them based on the ideas, not uh, basically sources, not basically based on the references. So basically, basically what you have to do first, identify the shared themes and ideas or issues. Okay, that the literature sources. Okay, basically when you read the literature, basically ideas, okay, what are the themes they have? What are the ideas they have? What are the issues they have? Which is basically common across the studies. Is there an idea that seems to be missing? Okay, do you like the theoretical approach in the literature? And what are trends in the literature or current debate or the development? So basically you have to identify, you have to answer these four questions, then only you can start doing the literature. So since I told you that, okay, the government, has brought a policy during the, in his, uh, during the COVID-19, like uh, April, uh, May 2020, that okay, all the developers or contractors should take care of the laborers, okay, should pay them some amount of money, them uh, quoted some amount of money that they should be paid them so that they'll not be left as hungry. Or maybe the government should identify them, provide them free ration, okay, provide them some amount of money. So that is basically government policy. Okay, so now, given that, so now I was looking at within that framework. So I was looking at, okay, what are the literature available? Okay, what are the studies are available? Both in the scholarly literature or the popular literature. That could may not be scholarly literature because it's, it's too early to expect that. There could be many studies which could have studied about the, the part of COVID-19 on the uh, construction workers. That could be possibly the uh, popular literature published in the magazine, published in the news media. So I have to look at those literature also. I can't ignore that. So based on that, you have to develop an overall thesis statement that include a perspective on the material of the view. Okay, these are the three things considered in the literature review. One thing that you should have an introduction, and this should present the core idea. Okay, what is your core idea? What is your research question? Okay, what the argument you want to bring here? Okay, the thesis statement around which the argument will develop. 
Okay. So basically, what is your core idea or argument? Because for me, that argument was that, okay, yes, government has imposed a policy and government has drafted a policy, whether it is properly implemented. My idea is that, okay, whether the, all the developers, contractors are obeying or are abiding that policy which is basically imposed by the government. So that's basically my question. So now that is my core idea. Okay, how this is being implemented. So this suggests me that, okay, how I can organize all the literacy into it. Then I'll come back to the body. Okay, this presents the your summarization, synthesis, and argument with the existing literature. Then I look at, okay, uh, how I can argue with the existing literature. Then I'll come to the conclusion, basically where I can conclude. Okay, so okay, then I start with that argument that, okay, whether the contractors and developers are abiding by the government policies. Then I see that, okay, what is happening with the different cities based on the literature. Then I'll come back that, okay, I'll basically, yes, the uh, people or the contractors or the builders are following or obeying or they're not obeying, but why they're not doing that? And what is the possible reasons? So that gives me some idea about the empirical work. Okay, so I'll come to the systematic review. So any doubt so far? Any doubt? Anyone? Yes, sir. No. No. No, no, sir. Okay, the systematic review. So there is a difference. So far I have already told you about the literature review. Okay. That could be a traditional literature review, that could be a systematic literature review. But systematic review is slightly different than a traditional literature review. Earlier, it's mostly used in the medicine or the clinical research. But nowadays, uh, all the disciplines, all the discourses are being followed. Uh, the systematic review, you know, mostly in the economics also, we have been uh, following the systematic review. And also basically, this tells us that, okay, evidence-based policy making. Okay, in the public policy program, or basically to teaching to the uh, IS officers or any bureaucrats, okay, when they design a policy or the government design a policy, so basically they have to generate some evidences. Okay, so it, how you can generate the evidences that basically, you are basically following a systematic review approach basically to generate the evidences. That evidence is basically guide the policy makers to design policies. Okay, a review. Okay, the systematic review aims to provide unbiased synth synthesis of many relevant studies in a single document. This, this looks like similar to the traditional review. Okay, basically it gives you, uh, um, see here is unbiased synthesis. Okay, remember, in traditional literature, we will not call it that unbiased synthesis. Because in the traditional literature, we are basically randomly searching the articles. We are not systematically searched the articles. When we do a random search, suppose I was looking at whether the uh, COVID shield is better or the Covaxin is better. When I randomly search the articles, I may end up with the 10 papers or 20 papers which supports that are, yes, Covaxin is a better, but it's, on, it's, it's biased, okay? Because suppose in traditional review, because I randomly saw that I just put that, okay, pay, uh, put that uh, two words that, okay, Covaxin and Covishield, I just got some 10 papers and I just downloaded. But that those 10 papers, that those 10 papers I got, the, those two 10 papers are talking about, uh, yes, Covaxin is better. But, there are 20, 30, or 40 papers which basically talk about the case for which will also better. Because that's uh, because doing the trial review, I missed those literatures. I missed those studies. Okay. But the systematic review will not miss those studies because there's some methodology involved. Okay. Therefore, it's called as unbiased synthesis of many relevant studies in a single document. Okay. So, a review that is conducted. According to clarify, according to clearly stated scientific research methods and is designed to minimize bias and errors 
inherent to traditional and narrative reviews. Okay, it's basically designed to reduce or mitigate, okay, or minimize the biases and errors. The example I've given, okay, to basically occur in case of traditional or narrative reviews. Okay, so in, in the why systematic review? Because it follows say, some protocol about the review, we have to do a detailed methodology because in a traditional review, you just uh, saw some few words and keywords in the Google Scholar or the Google, and you just download article and start writing. But no, here, before searching, before doing anything, you have a standard methodology. You follow some methodology or some methods to basically search up new articles also. Okay, so some methodology of data. Then you have option like you can do a quantitative or qualitative analysis, or you can do a meta-analysis or meta-synthesis. Okay. So what is the procedure you have to do? Basically, you have a background. Okay, any research issue, okay, you have a background. So first, while, while knowing the background, so first you have to identify clearly stated research question and objective. You have to identify clearly what is your research question here. Okay. Then, by using the research question, you have to identify the keywords. Okay, by using a research question and uh, looking at few research papers within that area, within that discourse, you have to identify few keywords and use the, that, those keywords. Okay, to search the article in the search engine like websites, scopus, not in the Google Scholar, not in the Google. Please remember in the systematic review, we are not searching in the Google Scholar on Google. We'll never search. Okay, we'll search in the search engine, that's a web of science or the scopus. Okay, where basically the peer reviewed papers are published. Then once we identify those articles, then basically we have a inclusion and exclusion criteria. Okay, you may end up with a thousands of articles, but you can't remove the thousands of articles. You have to identify which of the articles are more important for you. So some inclusion and exclusion criteria has to be adopted. Okay, so there is a rigorous search. Okay, but that I already explained the rigorous search for the selecting. During that inclusion and exclusion criteria, you will have a rigorous methodology or the methods or the rigorous points. Basically, that help you to identify the relevant studies. Okay, then you have basically critically going through the studies and basically extracting the data or the information from that selected studies. And your analysis will be based on that. Those studies, those are basically finally selected. And then you give present the findings. So that is all about the systematic review. Okay, so how it is different than the traditional review? See, here you have a protocol. Okay, because some plan or some uh, methods involved, for the selection of articles. Here I'm not, I'm not coming, see, please remember, it's not every paper will have a own methodology, okay, own methods uh, to basically do the empirical analysis, okay. Here I'm talking about the methods for selecting the articles. But when you do the traditional review, basically you search in the Google and getting some papers from the Google, just download it and select it, that's all. You just take those papers. But here, to choosing the each paper, you have some methodology, okay? The objective is very clear here. You have a clear objective identified as the research question. But in the traditional review, you may not have, may or may not have. And here you have in inclusion and exclusion criteria because you have a, some criteria basically that give you inclusion and exclusion criteria. But in case of traditional review, your criteria is not specified, okay? You got some 100 papers, out of 100 papers, you randomly select 50. Or randomly just talk, going through one by one papers and you just read some 40, 50 or 60 papers, then you go, okay, it's enough. I'll write a review paper. I'm not going to read next 40 papers. I don't know what they have written. Okay, but here it is not possible. You have to follow some methodology to select each of the articles. Then you okay, I have selected, out of 100, I have selected 10 papers. Okay, so that methodology in board that, okay, why you have selected 10 papers out of 100. Okay. The search strategy, basically search strategy involves like language, date, keywords, synonymy, titles, or Boolean operators, basically and or all. 
strategy is not explicitly stated in case of study strategy. Okay, so what are the bias? Although the literature, systematic literature review, please remember meta-analysis is part of a systematic literature review. Okay, meta-analysis is the quantitative analysis is basically we are doing. So it's part of the systematic literature review. So of course, there is a bias involved in the systematic literature review also. There's English language bias. Okay, as you know that in the systematic literature review, we are basically depending on the papers published in the English literature, English. There could be some papers, okay, those are published in the local language. Maybe you can think of the Russia, you can think of the France, some science papers, okay, published in Russia, France, or in Germany, they're local language. Okay, this is maybe a phenomenal work. But doing the systematic literature review, we are basically ignoring them or not included in the literature. Okay. Suppose, suppose you decide, it's up to you. Okay, you have to make a decision. Suppose you have decided that, okay, I'll uh, include those papers are published in English language. Okay, then second bias is the citation bias. Of course, when studies with significant or positive results are referenced in other publications. Okay, suppose some studies have some positive or significant results, those are basically keep on publishing and having the lots of citations. Sometimes some systematic literature review follows some citation as a criteria to include. They basically include some papers. Those papers are highly cited. Okay. Maybe some papers are highly cited. Maybe other papers which are very good, but may not be cited because they have not found the significant result. Okay. So may not be that could be the reason they are not cited. Okay. That's another bias. Then publication bias. So selective publication uh, of articles that show a positive treatment of effects of statistical significance. Okay. So you, uh, suppose you select articles which basically show some kind of positive treatment of effects of statistical significance, that is also another publication bias. Any doubt? Otherwise, I'll come to some examples. Any doubt? Hello, sir. Yeah. Yeah, other than English, if you want to refer, uh, is there a method to translate that? Translate that to English? Yes, at least the key findings. Yeah, that is happening. Okay, uh, so I know some of the, my, when I was doing my PhD, I know one guy, uh, my friend in I at Madras. So he got some papers. So those are written in the page. Okay, so he used a guy who, know, who is having the knowledge about the French, so he basically translated that paper. Okay. 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 You can translate. So any other? Jyoti Bajpayee. Do you want to ask? Jyoti Bajpayee or anyone? No question? Then it's a boring for me. You should ask lots of questions. Yeah, Dilip. Ask. Do we have any question, Dilip? Oh, some uh, chat also. Let me see the chat. Oh, there is no. Hello, sir. Yeah, please. Uh, sir, I wanted to know in general literature review, what we do, we uh, research the literature, then we find the research questions, then we frame our objective. Yeah. But here in systematic review, uh, we should have a prior objective that we want to do this thing. Accordingly, we um, frame our methodology and uh, find our literature. Is it like this? Yeah, I see. In the literature review, you are basically doing to identify the objective research question or the objective for the empirical studies okay. to carry out the empirical work. Yes, you are doing a literature review basically to identify objective or the research question to carry out the empirical work. Yes, 
But while doing the literature, traditional literature review, you basically use some keywords to basically search in the Google Scholar or Google. Yes, but here, what will happen? Okay, uh, here when, when you do the research or uh, literature, you might have some issue in mind. Okay. For the literature review, not for the empirical analysis. Okay. Okay. You might have some issue in mind. So basically, you are focusing on that issue. Okay. Okay. Suppose I can take the example of you. So you have the you have in mind that okay, uh, how okay so you don't know what is happening, but okay, how people are discounting the future in case of uh, use of the uh, efficient application. Okay. How people are discounting the future? That's in your mind. Okay. Okay. So that's your research question. Okay. Yes. Okay. Here that is a research question, and then you search. Then based on that, you basically identify a few words and search. Start searching. Yes. yes okay. Sir. Then you do that. Okay. You find out okay what are the discount rate happening across the world and what the research is there and how to identify discounting rate. Then you end up with okay why people are following the exponential discounting rather than the hyperbolic discounting, hmm. which was not there in the earlier question. After yes, the end of the literature search, you are end up with the, okay. That a large number of people are following the exponential discounting rather than the hyperbolic discounting. Okay, yeah. so that basically you end up with our day. Any other question? No, sir. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, sir. I am Priyanka Gupta from law department. Yeah. Uh, 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 actually, I'm too much uh, confused to take the review point uh, mm -hmm. because uh, I'm basically I'm a scholar, so I don't know ki what kind, what type of research methodology apply on that and uh, how can I review, uh, how, how prepare the review paper. So please guide me, sir. Yes, see, uh, uh, since I have told you how you can prepare a review paper, Yes, sir. And uh, what kind of uh, the uh, type of the methodology will be applied on this uh, review paper? And so there is applied the literature review and systematic review. So, uh, so lack of knowledge about that. So please. Let's see, suppose in the law. So what is your research? You might have done some research. Tell me your uh, research question or the research idea in the law. Actually, uh, actually, sir, I am working in the uh, cruelty in the society, the 498A. Now my research topic is 498A, cruelty, the the misuse of uh, that section. Uh, so, I don't know that section. Please tell me what is the section of 498 Yeah, yeah, sorry, sir. <laughs> the uh, cruelty related the uh, female, uh, female cruelty, the, uh, the physical and mental cruelty, on the, the uh, on women, the the uh, it's a, a weapon for women, but uh, the women uh, uh, taking misuse for that uh, uh, against the uh, men. Okay. So, so let us take on that. Okay, the physical and the mental harassment of uh, women. Okay. Sorry. Yes, that's sir. Yeah. Okay. Physical yes. and mental harassment of women. Okay. That's yes. Right. Yes, sir. So while doing the literature, basically you are looking at, so you are looking at, okay, there is some law existing. Okay. The law is existing which basically protects the women. Okay. Okay. So now the question is, you you want to know that, okay, whether the people are, those guys are, those people are, those women are vulnerable or being affected by harassment, whether they come forward to take the advantage of the law. Okay. Okay, whether they are basically still suffering from that, they're not coming forward. Okay, mm -hmm. whether there's some empowerment among the women so that they can come forward to, uh, to you know, that's basically, because so you know that, okay, there is a law, okay, there is a law which can protect the women, okay, which is already established law. Suppose they can go to the court of law, they can uh, basically protect it, they can basically hide for their harassment, okay, so why they're not coming? And the second thing that, so there is a law established which can basically protect the women. The second thing is okay, most of the women you understand from the newspaper or uh, uh, reading the newspaper, you say, okay, the, the newspaper is uh, coming up that there is a the large number of women that are being harassed and looking at the statistics, large number of rape cases are happening, a large number of uh, domestic violence, uh, the harassment is happening, physical, uh, physical and mental harassment is happening, but there is a less number of cases are being filed. Right. 
of protection are being happening. So why it is happening? Okay. So question is okay. Why? Why the women women are not coming forward? Why they are not protecting when the right they they have the right to protect themselves? So why they are not coming and taking the legal help? So that is a research question. So where you then you start? Okay, this is the issue with me. Then basically you start. Okay, now I search the articles. Okay, I search the papers. Those are already existing in the some already existing in the literature. So let me see what is happening in the across the India. Okay, what is happening in such? There could be literature in Madras. There could be literature in Kerala. There could be literature in Maharashtra. So then you see what is happening across the states. Okay, then we will see that okay, suppose in Maharashtra or suppose in uh, Chennai, some studies in Chennai, the woman is uh, empowered. So why the coming to the court and the filing the cases? But some cases in the rural villages they are not coming for that. Or some cases in the here. Uh, like uh, Haryana, they are not coming for that. Okay. 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 So why? Why then you say that? Okay. Why the people are in Haryana they are not coming for what? So they have something like half panchayat. If I remember in Haryana or somewhere else, half panchayat. Okay. So whether the half panchayat has an impact. Whether the village, uh, whether the villages, whether the particular village structure of the village has some impact on it. Okay. So that basically you have to identify. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, let yeah. me. Any other question? No, thank you, thank sir, you. I have a question. Yeah, bandana. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, my question is regarding that English language bias, which you were talking about in terms of literature review. Hmm. Uh, sir, yeah. basically, I'm a student of English department. But my research area concerns the Sindhi language literature. Now that is a different language and it's literature. So when I look for the literature available, obviously, in particularly in English language, there isn't any much literature available for that language literature. So my research question, obviously, there are so many unexplored areas which I have easily got up to. But yeah. when I consider the literature available and the researches done, particularly in Sindhi literature, in Sindhi language, done by the Sindhi scholars, then there is much. And then in that case, there isn't any question of doing that research. But I'm considering that research since no one has done that in English language. So, uh, like, should I be considering yeah. the researches so, which are... You. Yes, you should consider, okay. Uh, you should consider because some guys are doing uh, like Pravashanka Diveri is doing some research in Sanskrit. Okay. That's less likely that uh, many papers will be published in English. Okay. So here I'm talking in the largely, most in the social science, uh, social science context and from the economics perspective, because uh, from the, in economics, we have less papers, may not be having the very less papers, good papers available in other than English. Okay. So if you look at my, my perspective, it is uh, English language bias. But suppose I look from your perspective, from your discourse, the research you are doing, you definitely should look at other papers also. Okay, definitely you should look at the, those papers. But sir, in this case, there is a limitation. Since like I am an English language uh, learner and a student, like I cannot access to those available because there is huge corpus. The research is done in Sindhi language. Literature is something which is already at great level. So the topic, which is something very new for me in terms of English literature, English language research for the same Sindhi literature is going to be very new and unexplored. And the same is something which is very much done. But my issue is that that is not uh, accessible for those English language scholars and non-Sindhi uh, scholars. It's so my purpose is a little on, on different, but at the same time, yeah. You have to learn the Sindhi. Okay. You have to learn that language. Let me tell you an example. So, if I remember one guy, one professor from Harvard. So, he was doing some research in Tamil Nadu when I was doing my PhD. Okay. My first year or second year of PhD, he landed in Tamil Nadu, some rural villages. That time, he has given a presentation. Okay. He was doing, he's from anthropology. Anthropology and history background. So, when he landed in India, so he has given a presentation in my institute. He was speaking fluently English because he's coming from Harvard University. After three years, you can't imagine he was speaking in Tamil language, just given the entire presentation using the Tamil language. And he has done the three years field work in Tamil, Tamil Nadu. Okay. 
in the entire presentation, I have heard that 70 to 75 percent of the portion he was using the colloquial Tamil words and colloquial Tamil language because the thing that he has to learn that to understand the, uh, the behavior, to understand the issues which happen in the rural Tamil Nadu people. As long as the, see, language is one type of barrier, so he, you, you have to overcome that barrier to understand that. As long as you don't overcome that barrier, it, because any translator, suppose you are a translator and you have an interpreter, okay, that, uh, that okay, that is okay with some small research, like quantitative research, collect some uh, information. But suppose it involves a qualitative, okay, anthropological study, historical studies, sociological studies, you need to have a strong interaction with someone for a long time, okay? So then the language barrier is a bigger issue. That time, those people, even I know that guy, he has learned the language. So you got the message? Yes, sir. I have got the message, but sir, actually in my case, the language is not the problem. Actually, I just know the language. The problem is with the script because the researches which are already done are in Sindhi Arabic script. I'm, I'm not familiar with that. So, so that is problem which I have to resolve anyway. Yeah, thank you, sir. So that's basically, there's no other way. Either, see, I'll tell you that suppose you take help of someone. Okay. That may not be much effective as long as you are not learning that. It will be more effective if you basically put some effort to learn that. Okay, rather than depend on you can depend on someone else for to some extent. But come, suppose you are uh, decided, okay, I'll rest of my 10 years or 12 years or 15 years, I'm going to focus on this literature, then I have to do it. Okay. Thank, thank you, sir. It's very valuable. Thank you so much. Yeah. So then another thing, I'll just give you another example. Uh, some people are like uh, how uh, people are trying to identify doing the research. Uh, see, some of you might have heard about the honor killing. Did you hear about the, about the honor killing? Yes, sir. Okay. So, did you know that, okay, why it is happening? Did you go and ask the people who is basically killed? They said, okay, we are killed because of the intercaste marriage. Okay. So, intercaste marriage is happening all the caste. Okay, out of the, the why few caste people are just killing and others are not doing, what is happening? You ask them, okay, what, why it is happening and why, uh, what, suppose, uh, suppose last some people that, okay, suppose your daughter or son married to other caste, so they will kill him and her. You will not get answer easily. Those cases, we basically use some kind of experiments. Okay, some kind of experiments we do basically to understand the, their behavior. I know some people have done some experiment in the, uh, I think in Haryana and the Punjab. They try to identify that, okay, what is the major issue behind that. So that basically, see, doing that, because see where in case of literature, the honor killing, there is no literature, no study existing. There also, you have, you suppose in those cases also, you have to see that, okay, how we can do research. What kind of literature you have to depend? Okay, where no literature. We'll tell you, okay, honor killing is a major issue, it's a large issue, it's a social stigma. But what should I do? There's no literature. It doesn't mean that you should not do any research in that area. So I'll come back. Okay. So this is the paper I have written. So I've done a systematic review. Okay, I'll just give an example how I done a systematic review. So basically, my idea is that, okay, as you know that climate change is an issue because of which basically the variation of temperature and the rainfall, which affects the agriculture, the farmers is largely affected by the impact of climate change. So I just want to know that, okay, there are many studies. The large number of studies which tell that, okay, the farmers in some places in Andhra Pradesh, they're adapting to, they're basically taking some strategies to basically cope with climate change. Farmers in northeastern India, they're also taking some strategies to cope with climate change. Similarly, farmers in Rajasthan, Gujarat, Maharashtra, or Odisha, or West Bengal, even Telangana also. Okay. So my aid is that there are individual studies existing. So my aid is to know that, okay, so what are the adaptation strategies farmers are taking across India? 
That is my question. Yes, yes, farmers are adopting. There are many studies. What are the adaptation strategies? The farmers are adopting across India. Then my second research question was that whether there is any similarity that okay, some particular adaptation strategy the farmers are adopting. And then third thing I want to know because this systematic will tell you, okay, so where basically the more research are focused and where there is no evidence, where there is evidence and where there is no evidence. And then they'll tell you, okay, there are many studies uh, published in Odisha, Andhra Pradesh, or Tamil Nadu, or the Maharashtra, but there is no studies in Jammu and Kashmir. There's no studies in some part of Nagaland, Manipur, Assam, or there are no studies in uh, uh, like Uttarakhand or Himachal Pradesh. So that basically by doing a systematic review, okay, so basically you'll get to know that, okay, so these are questions basically you'll address. Okay, so this is the paper I have published in 2021. Okay, so basically see, I have started with a vital research question. Basically, uh, what is basically, uh, what are the things are farmers are adopting? Okay, basically understanding farmers adaptive behavior, basically, what are the things farmers are taking to basically cope with the impacts of climate change? Okay, so what I've done, uh, identify that, okay, there are many studies existing, but there is a lack or dot of extensive review. Okay, so therefore I've started doing that research uh, sometime in 2018 or 19, when I published in 2021. So, so basically we have adopted a PRISMA approach, okay, which is a standard approach, preferred reporting items for systematic reviews and meta-analysis. So first thing that you should have a, as I've told you, you should have a research question. Okay, that research question will give you some idea to identify the keywords. That is here my research question that how Indian farmers are adapting to climate change. Okay, how Indian farmers are adapting to climate change. Okay, so given that research question, okay, given that research question, so basically, I have identified few keywords. Okay, the so PQ keywords I have added because I have here used the Boolean operator. Boolean operator is and and all. Okay, so the keywords I have used the climate smart agriculture practices, coping strategies, climate change adaptation. There are many keywords. Okay, so that basically the, the research question will tell you that okay, these are the keywords. So I have used those keywords. Okay. To search in different databases like Web of Science, Jester, Science Direct, EBSCO, or Safe Journal, different databases I've searched. Okay, or uh, different databases I've searched. So, apart from that, different databases I search. So, what I've done again, so maybe I might have missed some of the articles. So, what I've done, so I have gone through a few papers, references, or bibliography. Look at that, okay, whether I've missed any important article. That's a basically backward search of research paper. Basically, we just have to go through some most important papers, references, to see that, okay, some of the literature, okay, some of the most important literature, we could have missed during this process. We could have, then the possibility, okay. So once we have done that, once we have uh, searched the articles, okay, once we have searched, once we are doing the search of articles, we are end up with the 19,499 19, articles, okay, by using those keywords. So we can't review the 19,000 articles, 19,000 odd articles. We can't review them. So what we have done, so then we are basically employing the inclusion and exclusion criteria. Okay, we are employing the inclusion and exclusion criteria. That's basically the second and third stage. That is basically the screening and eligibility. Okay, screening, you are screening all the articles and then you see that, okay, we eligibility means which are the articles to be included, which are to be excluded. See, this is the inclusion and exclusion criteria. So first thing, the literature type. I have included all the papers, those are empirical research, or empirical papers. I've excluded all the review paper, review articles, book, book chapters, and conference proceedings. That's my exclusion criteria. Those papers are written in English are included. Those papers are not written in English are just excluded. And time period. Okay, that's basically I've considered that papers are published in 2001 to 18. These are published before 2018 as a problem. Country, because I, see my research question that okay, how farmers are adapting in India. So therefore, I'll focus on those articles have taken some case studies from India. 
Okay, if some articles have not taken any case study in India, no discussion about the India, so I just exclude them. So title and abstract. I look at the title, but other than abstract. Okay, those are basically uh, basically my idea. Okay, how farmers are adapting to climate change. I look at the okay within the title some idea about okay. I just get a flavor that yes, this article is talking about that okay. Uh, focusing on the pharmaceutical adaptation measures. If it's not focusing on that title and abstract, I just exclude them. Then I'll go for a full article screening. Okay, but basically look at okay whether this article is focused on the pharmaceutical adaptation behavior. Or I just exclude them. <laughs> okay, last one is the included studies. Let us come back to here. So initially, as I've told you that we have ended up with the 19,000 odd articles, that's basically the identification stage. We have ended up with that by searching all the articles. Then you have seen that, okay, since uh, some of the articles might have appeared two times or three times, okay, we have just uh, excluded the duplicate, that uh, those articles might have occurred uh, two times or three times in the search. So we have excluded them, we end up with the uh, around 16,000 or 361 articles. So now, basically, we have to exclude them, okay? Uh, other than empirical research papers, non-English, or year before 2001, or the focus in India. While doing that, we have excluded many papers. We have ended up just left with the 287 articles. Now I have we have to go through the title as well as the abstract of the 287 papers. Okay. So exclude just so we have gone through, we have decided that we will exclude the papers if the following words, okay, following words is not appearing in the title as well as the abstract. Okay. Like, uh, okay, whether this paper is focused on agriculture, farm level adaptation, farmers' adaptive behavior, coping strategies, climate change, extreme events. So, by doing that, we have just excluded 237 papers. So, I just ended up with the 50 papers. Now, we are going through all the papers by full text. We have gone through the uh, full text of the 50 papers. See that, okay, whether these papers address the research question or objective. Okay, that match with the our objective and research question is basically we are looking for. So basically, we have excluded 10 papers. So we are end up with the 40 papers. And basically, within the 40 papers, we have just gone through the bibliography and citations of those 40 papers. See that okay, whether any important papers you have just excluded. By doing that, we have added another four papers. So by end up with the, end up with the 40 papers. Any doubt? Sir, initial steps, does it uh, done automatically? Or automation was used or for exclusion? No, no automatic. No exclusion has been given. 19,000 articles is automatic. You can give the exclusion that time, but we have just done with the automatic. Okay. That's why we will end up with the 19,000 articles. Okay. This is the first systematic review I wrote uh, where I've just used the automatic. Automation. Okay, I'm not given any exclusion criteria, so that's why I have ended up with the 19,000. Okay, but if you use some simple exclusion criteria, you may end up with the uh, thousand to five thousand, depending on the research issue. Yeah, someone raised the hand. Smooth, uh, yeah. Please. Uh, so I have a question. Sruti Mehta, please. Is there any uh, chart you have written anything? Sruti Mehta, please. Oh, she has removed. Any other one? Yeah. Hello, sir. Yeah, please. Uh, sir, can, uh, uh, can you go to the previous slide, sir? Okay. Uh, sir, actually, the inclusion criteria that you have selected, suppose uh, uh, I have selected Scopus as my search engine. Okay. Uh, so there I can, uh, like, uh, there they have given filters where I can select uh, the articles for, from 2001 to 2018. You can do that, yes. Uh -huh. uh, then I can select the journal articles also, literature type. So uh -huh. after doing this, you, you, end, huh, you, you end, ended up with 25 pages or 20 pages. After doing all this. 
So, like, uh, as I have told you that uh, since I have not selected any inclusion or exclusion criteria there, I end up huh. with a nineteen thousand article. Suppose you choose those things, you will end up with a thousand or two thousand articles. So then, uh, like, uh, I want to know, uh, know how many days or time you took to filter out the articles to go through all the articles abstract. Like, is it a one-day process? <laughs> No, no, no. I think uh, this uh, entire work has been done by my RA DJ Kumar, so who is uh, also co-author in this paper. So he took uh, literally four, three to four, three months, literally. So every day, and like suppose if uh, one person is doing, so every day he will go through one page, will see the articles. No, no, no. Then... So there are there are softwares. Okay, okay. there are some softwares. Okay, so who is basically we have used. Okay. And in the software, we put all the articles. Okay, we extract all the citations. Okay, okay sir. extracting all the citations. Once we extract the citation, automatically that software will extract all the abstracts. Okay, so it, it automatically identifies what are the duplicates because identifying all the papers appear two times or three times is difficult. Okay, okay. On the, on the yes, sir. Okay, so that software will basically exclude all the papers identified two times or three times. One, okay, one, sir. Okay. Then you okay, then you know that okay. Then that software basically will use all kind of exclusion criteria. Okay, uh -huh. all okay, kinds of exclusion, inclusion criteria. You use that software. Okay, uh -huh. but now uh, some point of the time we have to gone through at least the title and abstract of the title of the articles. Okay, that takes some time. Okay, okay to make a decision. Okay, those articles I can include or those kind of articles should be excluded. That takes some time. Okay, okay so that's why it took uh, him for three months. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Anyone? Sir, what is the name of the software, sir? Is it open source? Uh, I guess it is open source. Okay. It's open source. Okay. Uh, uh, let me... Uh, it's open source software. And it's just you can, uh, you can use it for maximum three days, two months. Okay. You can use it for two months maximum. Uh, let me give me some time because I forget the name of the software. Sure, sir. Uh, or maybe later through organizers also you can provide. Uh, I can tell you the name of the software. So I now I forget it. Okay. Uh, yeah, through I can uh, email you or through the organizer I can tell you. If I remember in between. I can also tell you, okay. Yes, sir. Sir, can you also share this uh, PPT if you can? Uh, this is the EPPI software. Okay. Uh, it's called as EPPI Reviewer 4. Okay. EPPI Reviewer 4 software. I can put that in the chat. Okay. Uh, if someone is interested, uh, they can uh, write it. Uh, they can use it because this is a field you can use it for one, two months, I think. EPPI, uh, no, sorry, EPPI, uh, reviewer, four. It's a freely downloadable, uh, you can use it. So by doing this, see what I've done, then I basically statist, uh, done, done some descriptive statistics about the papers. So what I've done, I just put the year by number of papers published. Okay, 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, or 2018. And then I look at, okay, how many papers are quantitative as the qualitative. Or uh, similarly, these are the case study papers. Okay, how many papers are focused on the single state and how many papers are focused on the more than one state. So that basically guided me also. Okay, how many papers are focused on the cross-section and panel data? Panel means uh, basically... Uh, the, those high households are surveyed more than one time. That's a panel data. Or you are surveyed only one time. That's a cross-section data. Okay, how many? Uh, so basically cross-section or panel. Or how many are primary and how many are depending on the secondary sources. And then I look at, okay, how many papers from the different states? Okay. So I have identified, okay, there are many papers are published in case of Odisha, then Andhra Pradesh, and then Karnataka, Bihar. But there, there is no studies from the North, North Eastern states. So that gives me that, okay, there's a less lack of evidences available in the Northeastern states. That gives me the, through the systematic review because it's an unbiased evidence. 
see then second thing i have done here okay so then i look at okay how the different studies are looking at the different kinds of adaptation measures because uh, i just talk uh, a lot of uh, so you much detail because uh, it's not uh, may not be required for you so because there are suppose i categorize all the adaptation do five categories i look at okay there are many papers which focused on the first category but there are many less of studies focusing on the uh, fourth and fifth category so we need some kind of research in those categories and then i was doing that okay so where basically evidence is exist across the states in india okay so i see that okay how many papers are published across the states in india so i see that okay there are many studies in odisha or andhra pradesh given the studies they are and there are studies uh, uh, list list number of studies in particularly few states which basically have identified okay these are the states where basically there is no studies existing okay these are the papers so i have started and then i see that okay what are the adaptation measures they have taken okay then i was just trying to identify okay what are the adaptation measures are largely studied because here i found that okay the water management okay since the water is discussed across the india or many parts of india so water management is mostly adopted and most of the studies studies are focusing on the water management okay around 24 studies out of the 34 studies so that gives me the better idea or better picture about that okay about the climate change adaptation research but okay what is happening happening across the states what are the adaptation measures that people are adopting okay what is things are happening so that gives me a bigger flavor a bigger picture about me the adaptation research in india so second paper i have written which is uh, publishing next month because that the money was mentioning uh, some books where i have a chapter there so this is the chapter which is coming basically it's another systematic review you have done so what motive what motivates farm level adaptation in india okay there was looking at okay and then okay what are the adaptation measures the people are adopting this is basically looking at the what motivates the determinants of particular adaptation measures okay so that's what we are looking at uh so this year we have seen that okay there uh, some studies are existing based on the past uh, systematic review we identified okay there are literature existing uh, some of them quantitative but we have we have no idea that okay what are the major determinants which basically influence because some studies identify okay these are these factors influence uh, farmers to adapt some places they look at these factors and influence farmers to adapt but while designing the policy at the national level so we need to know what is the common factor which basically influence farmers to adapt and what are the things are being um, so far a, explored and what are the factors are not being explored so far that's also important that gives you idea that okay let us uh, do some research in that line so by doing this see here what we have done we have followed the same four uh, principles and also the boolean operator and uh, the keywords we have selected here basically we have searched only the database web of science here not other databases Then we have selected the climate smart agriculture practices, coping strategies, climate change adaptation, farm level adaptation measures, farming community agriculture, farmer agriculture household in India. So by doing this, so what have we done? We have end up with the one eighty three articles. Okay, so by searching the web of science. so uh, record screen there is uh, since there is not such in the second uh, change in there is no case of the double appearance or double counting so we have just a uh, record screening of the 183 papers so basically this followed the other than empirical papers published before 2000 one at least one study area from india so we have just excluded all the papers end up with the maximum 37 papers okay then we have gone through the full text or abstract of these papers and excluded around nine papers so we are end up with the 29 papers from the web of science then we have gone through the uh, these articles references and end up with another six papers basically based on the citation of these articles so end up with the 35 papers then we look at okay well, the study 35 papers so there is focus on single state or the more than one state or there any study that is focus on the single country or the more than one country or there in quantitative and qualitative studies okay so then we are looking at then by doing this we are looking at okay what are the uh, determinants the basically causal relationship between uh, variables with adaptation measures we we'll look at take another determinant see the e study by 
So yes, this study has considered this determinant, that study has considered this determinant, and this study has considered this determinants. So then we are looking at, okay, the frequency of considering the determinants, then you see that, okay, there are all the studies, most of the studies are considering asset and income as a determinant. Okay, and uh, demographic characteristics or the education of the household head or the agriculture livelihood. Uh, so these are the considered determinants, but like risk attitude behavior, which is the most important factor for someone to influence or whether you want to take the risk averse, you are the risk lover. Okay. Uh, so those things are important, but uh, so, but some other studies are that less number of studies are considered that most of studies are not. So then basically give you a idea that okay, which are the things are already studied and which are things are not explored so far, are less explored, not explored or the less explored or the where it is explored. Okay, any doubt? Yeah, studies. Yeah. So. So actually, when uh, discussing with my colleagues, like some of them were of the opinion that uh, we should also include uh, like a kind of uh, semi-formal uh, sources also. For example, these uh, monographs or uh, working papers, mm -hmm. can they also be included or excluded from this SLR? Uh, see, actually, in the systematic review literature, uh, mm -hmm. yes, uh, by doing my first uh, systematic review paper, which I've basically shown to you, so there I have a uh, very confusion. I was wondering that, okay, why should I include my working paper? See, by looking at climate change adaptation, there are many agriculture institutions in India. Okay? Mm -hmm. And they have must have published several reports, okay, which never published in the journal article. Okay, Correct. several reports published and uh, maybe they're talking on some agriculture interventions, which are good uh, for the farmer's productivity. And uh, there could be some report they have submitted to government. Okay, the one thing they basically point out in the systematic review, because those things are not peer reviewed. As okay. long as it's not peer reviewed, we can't uh, money basically uh, depend so on. Will it, we can yeah, talk. but uh, will it not lead to source bias, sir? Of a kind of. The, uh, see, that's I told you now. There's some kind of bias involved. Okay. Okay, there's some kind of bias, source bias is involved because we are uh, excluding them because those are not peer reviewed. Okay, we don't know that whether these findings are, we can't trust those findings, whether it's correct or the wrong. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the second thing that, uh, maybe, see, that's it, see, we are depending on the scopus and the web of science. You know that many journal articles are not part of the web of science and scopus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There could be some articles published. Mm -hmm. But we are, the guideline tells that, okay, we can't depend on, uh, we can't include those articles because we don't know the standard reviewing methods of those articles. Okay, so your take is only published articles, peer review should be considered. And not the that, to be, that to be part of the web of science scopus because we, we just believe that, just believe that, okay, these articles which are published as part of the web of science scopus. They're properly because different. if we take Google Scholar as one of the source, like Google Scholar includes sometimes even uh, these institution articles and uh, working <laughs> papers that's, and all that's that. You see that I have not sourced in the Google Scholar. Okay, okay. No, no, yeah. I'm just asking. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. You'll get that's why I told you that Google's Google means you will end up with the lakhs, including newspaper articles also. Mm -hmm. Okay, everything available under the sun. And even in EBSCO, sir, if we see certain newspaper articles, some reports will be there, even if we visit EBSCO, yeah. that thing. That's the basic, and that's I told you, we'll exclude that, but okay, we'll consider only the journal articles. Correct, correct, correct. Okay. So I Fine. agree with you that we are uh, doing this, we are excluding some of the gray literature, which is, could be more important. Okay, we are excluding them. Because but, when we discuss with our colleague, their logic is, for example, why SLR? Because it is an upcoming area. In the upcoming area, mostly working papers will be there or like these kind of sources will be there. So that is how they argue with me. That is the thing. Okay. Because the, the guidelines tell that we can't include them because we are not able to trust those papers. Because as long as it's not peer-reviewed, okay, okay. Because, uh, okay, sometimes if you remember, uh, I don't know how, to what extent you are following the climate change debate. Uh, sometimes in 2007, we got a no, Peace Nobel Prize to the IPCC, if you remember. Mm -hmm. Nobel Prize, IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
basically our uh, famous guy the pachuri was as uh, heading the theory was the uh, heading ipcc but later was some controversy about his uh, data huh? later I'm right. controversy about the data about the himalayan gate himalaya okay because yeah. those articles are not peer reviewed those are the reports okay so you will see that next uh, the assessment report about the 2014 15 and the assessment report is already recently published last month and for one report is coming next year so they have they are very careful they have included the papers those are published peer reviewed no journal article no government reports nothing okay as long as it's not peer reviewed they will not include that in the assessment report oh correct okay because otherwise you end up with those kind of things okay any doubt Fine, sir. Fine. Yeah, sir. Yeah. So, in case of okay, just for a generic inquiry, in yeah, case yeah. thesis, we will be elaborating most of these things, but the uh, the concept remains almost the same, right, sir? Yeah. Yeah, concept remains the same. Uh, still, I'm not guessing what the concept we are talking. So in the sense, the paper writing, research article or review article that you are talking about, even this is also the same uh, methodology we need to follow. But we'll be elaborating more, right? Yeah. Yes. You are elaborating more, and you are elaborating systematically, not the randomly. Okay. And sir, uh, let us say multiple uh, liter literature review article. You are uh, showing many sections. Hmm. So, like uh, each section, there should be a flow, right? Yeah. So you talk of one idea in one of the section, then you take it to the next uh, yeah. paragraph with a different uh, idea and so on, right? Yes, yes. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. <coughs> so then I'll go to another literature uh, systematic review we have done. We are yet to be published. It's under review. So here we are not talking on the climate change adaptation, but we are taking something different. the soil based intervention some of you might have heard about the soil health card okay uh, recently uh, drafted maybe uh, in 2014 and 15 was basically uh, taking that program across india about the soil health card providing the information to the farmer about their uh, uh, nutrition about the soil and uh, providing the information about the what kind of fertilizer they can use what kind of crop they can cultivate so now the question is that Whether the soil-based intervention has lead to crop crop yield and economy returns, because you have different kinds of soil-based interventions, so whether it lead to crop yield and economy returns. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Slip up. Okay. So there are many papers. Okay, there are many individual papers which basically talks about that. Okay, uh, soil-based intervention increase the yield. That particular intervention increase the yield. That particular intervention get economy returns. Okay. Economy returns basically were depending on the benefit cost ratio. So this study that aims to systematize yes. the relationship between soil-based interventions, crop yield, and economy returns. So that basically were depending on the benefit cost ratio in India. So here we what we have done, we have followed the same approach, the Prisma approach. Okay. So here we have done three types of string, the keywords to identify. so first string was to identify many journal articles as possible pertaining to soil health card published between the 2010 to 2019 in india that also includes the economic outcome captured through crop yield or crop productivity and uh, then we consider few uh, words okay to select published articles only on the soil health card scheme in india and link to the economic see here we have uh, the idea that okay the talking about the those papers we need those papers are talking about the soil health card or soil interventions and linked to the economic outcome like it, uh, either the uh, return in terms of productivity or the return economic return in terms of calculate the benefit cost ratio okay and uh, third final string attempted to search articles related to india on different aspects of soil so by doing this so what we have done we have just considered a uh, key words okay the strings we have used to like uh these are the strings we have used to solve the articles in the uh, basically we have solved in the wave of science scope of gesture even we thought okay let us in this case to identify few gray literature we could have missed by doing that we have searched in the ecw 
we saw it in the indian journal of agriculture economics okay to see that okay whether we could have missed some of the articles are most important okay because as we know that okay some of the articles could have published in indian journal of agriculture economics or uh, some one journal another the indian journal for agriculture economics and research review we saw particularly in those uh, journals all the issues between 2010 to 19 we have saw so there's some chart in the question Okay, so now basically while doing this search, okay, they selected the keywords. So then we have used the same kind of inclusion and exclusion criteria, okay, to select the articles. Okay, so while doing the search, we have end up with the three thousand seven hundred twenty-five articles. We identified uh, since now we have searched in the uh, three four search engine, we identified okay six hundred articles that are uh, duplicates are basically repeatedly appeared. Then we have gone through the title and abstract of three thousand one hundred. See, the writing this literature review, I'm telling that my call my RA was working nearly eight months. Okay, and uh, we have reviewed, or I have draw, drafted the paper, or the discussed and written to him more than twenty times. Okay, to select the articles. And uh, to basically how we can track, how we can organize the papers. Okay, so uh, so we have worked nearly around eight months. There's no other one except this paper. Okay, he has basically put his report for eight months. Okay. So three thousand eight articles have excluded based on the literature type. Then we basically gone through the introduction and conclusion of the one zero one articles. Okay, again we have excluded fifty seven articles. Then we have gone through the full text training. So we have selected the twenty-eight articles, and we have just uh, six articles from the additional search, and end up with the okay. Uh, so twenty-two papers for the final review. Okay, so twenty-two papers. These are the twenty-two papers we are looking at. See what I have done here. So uh, so different kinds of uh, we are just uh, by looking at the literature, we see okay what kind of interventions are available. So there are different kinds of interventions. Okay, one is the control group that no intervention. Okay, another is farmers practice. So what farmers are basically doing? So no suggestion from the agricultural extension. Then it's extension like balanced nutrition, nutrient management, recommended dose for chemical fertilizer, integrated nutrient management, or integrated plant nutrient supply, or secondary and micronutrient. So different kind of interventions are there. So we have categorized them. We see that okay, each paper buys. What are the they consider the twenty two papers? So what are the things they basically consider or which kind of you know, Is where basically they are focused. Okay, why means yes, no means n means no, and where basically they are focused. Which state they are considered? Okay, so I identified okay it's the state which they are focused. So here what I have done, we just calculate the uh, productivity and benefit cost cost ratio based on the treatment like C, which is a farmers practice and control. That okay, there is no intervention and farmers are doing what they want. T one this basically B N M and R D F T two treatment two I N M and N P S or the O F that organic. Fertilizer and biofertilizer. Then we consider okay the each. Uh, then we have done for the each crop wise the rice. See here we are con con organizing okay organized way that okay rice. These are the seven papers we are talking about the rice. They have some done some experience on rice. Okay, what basically they identify? Okay, suppose they so identify the figures. Okay, so crop yield. Okay, so this are T one. They have taken the particular paper like day two thousand fifteen. They have taken the. Uh, Treatment that T1 and T2. So what is their major findings? Similarly, with respect to economy returns, crop yield basically thousand kg per hectare. The economy return basically benefit cost ratio. Similarly, we have identified for each crop, maize, maize, wheat, soybean, groundnut. For each studies, all the studies have been categorized. Okay. Or uh, similarly, sorghum, cotton, palm millet, banana, onion. A sunflower, potato, apple. So other crop crops, other the studies are available. We have just considered for all the crops. Okay. So this is the way basically we are doing the systematic review. So what is the meta analysis? See, remember that meta analysis is a part of the systematic. Review. Okay. Meta is not like a stand separate. Okay. Once you have done the systematic review. Okay. Since what happens here, we have done the systematic review. 
Okay, so here we have some uh, uh, figures. Okay, so these figures we can take. Okay, these figures we can take. These quantitative figures we can take and do the meta analysis. Okay, so meta analysis is where mostly the quantitative approach for systematically combining results of previous research to arrive at the conclusion about it. Okay, suppose you want to. You know, because it's basically a power of a treatment. Okay, suppose you want to know about that. Okay, whether the COVID shield is better or the Covaxin is better. You have twenty studies. So one study told that okay, COVID COVID shield is seventy uh, percent effective. Another study is telling COVID shield is thirty percent effective. Some study is telling COVID shield is sixty percent effective. Some study is COVID shield is eighty percent effective. So what happens? So those informations, the thirty, seventy, eighty, you have collected those information. Okay, by collecting those informations, now you have come up with come. So you have come up with another value. Okay, another value which tells you that. Okay, by combining all the papers. Okay, by combining all the papers, by combining all the research studies, how effective COVID is. That's basically the meta analysis. Okay, that basically we are doing in meta analysis. So meta analysis refers to a statistical analysis of data. Okay, data. That's basically thirty, forty, seventy, eighty, from independent primary studies, focused on the same question. That whether COVID is better, which aims to generate a quantitative estimate of studied phenomena. For example, the effectiveness of the intervention. Okay, here quantitative means numbers, systematic means methodological, method, methodical, combining means you are putting together. And previous research that's what already done. Conclusion: Basically, you getting a new knowledge. Okay, there's ten papers existing. So those ten papers are talking of uh, okay how effective how effective uh, the studies uh, the COVID shield or Covaxin. Now we're coming of the that combine all the ten papers. We're coming up with that okay whether the COVID shield is effective or Covaxin is effective. so meta analysis okay so used to do to establish a statistical significance in studies that have conflicting results to have a more correct and precise estimate of the effect magnitude by increasing the statistical power because now there is a conflicting result about the covid shield and covax shield sometimes you are know, they are telling that okay covid shield is better for that uh, alpha variant or uh, covax shield is better for that alpha plus variant Or uh, COVID shield is better for that mu variant, okay? So I tell no, no COVID uh, that a uh, COVAX shield is better for that a uh, South African variant or the UK variant or German variant, okay? So different kinds of studies are coming up. Different kind of things are reported in the newspaper. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay. Now the question is, so you are now confused. You are confused. I am also confused, and everyone is confused. Okay, who is one is better? Okay. That ten studies, fifteen studies, and every day studies are coming. So in that case, we'll use a meta analysis to see that okay, to combining all the estimates, okay, all the estimates, all the figures they got in all the studies to see that what is the effect of the size effect. That's basically the size effect, okay. What is the size effect of the Covaxin and the Covid shield? Okay, to examine potential potential reason for variability and heterogeneity in the study results. To examine subgroups with individual numbers are the key statistical significance. Okay, so the final full effect estimate is the key outcome. Okay, so basically, since it's all dichotomous data, just a zero one data. Okay, we just calculate the odd ratio, and uh, then basically we use to do some statistical uh, methods. Okay, uh, that's basically fixed effect meta analysis, assuming that effects expected from each study in the same. Is the same the same? Or as uh, we sometimes use the randomized uh, effect, assuming there is heterogeneity across the study. Okay, then basically we compare them. So I just uh, end up here. Thank you for listening to me. If you have any questions, since I have another a uh, few minutes, so another ten minutes I am having. Okay, ten fifteen minutes I am having. So I will not delay you to take the launch. So please uh, let me know. 
Hello, sir. Yeah. Thanks for the nice illustration, sir, and uh, great work. Uh, generic query, uh, are your studies being uh, taken up by government authorities so that it will benefit the uh, farmer community at large? Hmm. Are, are there any efforts, sir, by the authorities to implement this so that uh, farmers will be benefited? No, no, sorry, I'm not getting your point. Yeah. Because uh, you have come up with some uh, data. Hmm. Is it useful really being taken up by the government or some authorities so that uh, uh, they can implement something, intervene something? Uh, yeah, it's uh, up to the government. And uh, most often, uh, they take some of the studies. Okay, sometimes we uh, send them. Basically, that's why we shared our uh, publication in the social platform with uh, basically the Twitter, uh, tagged all government sources. Hopefully, they'll get to know that okay, there is a study when they're thinking of. And similarly, also we present our paper in different platforms. So basically, policymakers are there. And when I was uh, working in Gujarat four five years before, I was doing some study related to micro irrigation. You might have heard about the drip and sprinkler irrigation. Okay. Yes. Sir. I was doing some research related to drip and sprinkler irrigation. So once I finished the study, okay, those papers are published. Once I finished the study, basically what we have done was basically having a dissemination workshop. We call this as a dissemination workshop. Basically, we invited all the stakeholders from the government as well as the non-government organizations. Okay, those are basically working with the drip and sprinkler irrigation. Okay, uh, so we invited all the stakeholders and uh, present our findings. Okay, what basically we got the finding, and uh, basically we have uh, that time we have written it that's called as a policy brief. Basically, as you know that the policy makers, okay, the bureaucrats, they might not have time to read your thirty page research paper. Okay, no one has time to read your thirty page research paper. Okay, so that time we basically write policy brief. Okay, the policy brief because sometimes see you sometimes we use jargons, nomen uh, some uh, economic uh, jargons. Sometimes you use the statistics. Maybe some uh, bureaucrats may not have, have idea about the statistics. Okay, may not understand about the statistics. It's, then he'll lose the interest to read the paper. So basically, what what we have done, we have basically drafted a policy brief. Okay, the policy brief is just use a simple language. And very beautiful graphs, no tables. Okay, from the result and findings, no statistical results will be given there. Only beautiful graphs based on the findings. Just a two to three pages, maximum three pages. Okay, so what we have drafted and give to the policymakers. Okay, then we leave it to policymakers whether they take what the message they are going to take from home and what the message they are going to implement. And as for my knowledge, uh, there is a I forgot the name uh, of the department in Gujarat. So we have done a study for them. Earlier they used to give when the Modi was the CM that time, not Modi, Anandiben Patel was the CM that time. So, uh, so that study basically the, the uh, secretary took it to Anandiben Patel and uh, got a grant, the uh, ten times higher than the grant he was getting earlier. Okay, it's office department. Yeah, thank okay. you. I also thank organizers for bringing such speakers. Sir, uh, one more query. I am from engineering background. The yeah. methodology that you discussed is so common for uh, even engineering, right, sir? Yeah, yeah, it's, in, in, it's, it's basically we have borrowed from the clinical research. Originally, we have borrowed from the clinical research, medicine. Okay. And, and in, in the medicine. Yes, medicine. sir. Yeah, and in the previous slide, uh, you just ran through the two methods. I, I was not very clear. It's a Can statistical. You, it's a statistical. Okay, how do you, because you got a data from the e-studies, okay, so now you have to do it in statistical methods, okay. So that's why I'm not uh, depend on more on this because uh, some of you might not have an hour about that, that's why I'm not depending on more on this, because it's a statistical method. Yes, sir, we will look into this, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Anyone, any other question? Any other? Or someone has written in a chart. As I stated earlier, I'll share all the those PPT. Anyone? Sir, we would like to call, contact you in the future for any technical assistance, sir. Thank yes, you, sir. sure, sure, sure. 
Yeah, he has shared his uh, email ID with all of you. You can contact. So, Prabhas, if there is no question, can we start here and uh, get to lunch? Yes, sir. We will end the session. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay, Chandra. Thank you very much.